So I have a lot of plants actually growing in this container and this is one of the ones that have kind of like grown outside the container and need a lot of cutting back. So I'm gonna do an entirely plant one on me, um, FYI for your information on, on that later. But I want your attention not to be drawn to this one or this one, but to these two right here in the middle. So you could actually see them a little bit more um, closer. And actually this one is not rooted. I actually just cut this back from one of my other planters. So you could see that this one was just cut. Actually, I kind of knocked it off and I semi cut it. So I'm letting that subarize over and I'm just going to plant it up for here. But because I'm talking about these two, this is a variation on the form of this, which used to be known as Senecio scoposis, and that is how most of them are actually sold in the market. Although it's been changed over to the genus Capuccia, Capuccia uh, scoposa, and then this one's a uh, variation at Adoensis, I, I believe it is, and it's referring to the place that it's actually um, originally from, from or found in. So they're the same species, but then a, just a different variation, and you could see how the leaves look like this. And scaposa or scaposus generally means scape, and a scape is like a leafless stem. So that's um, referring again to the morphology of this plant. Um, but yes, there's a lot of interesting different kinds of varieties in here. This looked a little bit more manicured back when it was growing a little less, and I think that you learn a lot by doing companion planting. And I know this is a little bit of um, a, a side topic, but some of the plants that you grow tend to grow a little bit more large, whereas some kind of stick a little bit closer to the way that you originally planted it. And, and I actually have to say that this Capuccia or the Senecio scaposa um, actually is one of those ones that makes a really good companion planting because it doesn't go kind of like crazy like this one that you see here, um, which needs a little bit of uh, cutting back and planting elsewhere. So yeah, this started off like very compact and like a little bit more rosette shape and then it just kind of like started to, to grow crazy. So these plants are actually native, I believe a little bit more to the Madagascar area. You could tell with this kind of downiness or this mealiness to the actual leaves, this white shade, that it's probably this uh, white uh, velveteen kind of look probably means that it's not a shade plant. It's one that's growing out in full sun and that white will probably bounce back the sunlight. So this is something that could grow in full sun conditions. I've been growing it in my southwest facing window, growing both of these in my southwest facing window. And like I said, I had this in a different companion planter and, um, and now I'm gonna put them in both of the, the same because I kind of went with, uh, with one of the looks of the planter is a little bit more white hue, white, um, white kind of fur-like plants. Uh, and that seemed to, to do well, but you'll also see that I have like a Gasteria truncata in here and a Haworthia and one of these um, mesem type plants, which are also very nice actually growing in, in here and in this Echeveria as well. But um, so, and some Avonia back here, Anacampseros, those ones that look like little bird turds in the back. So there's a lot, there's a lot to this, this, uh, this planter. Anyway, so uh, full sun conditions, I would say giving it a little bit more, you can't really see the mixture that I have in there, but it's a little bit more of a perlite mixture. So you want something that's really well draining. And because these are you know, planted in kind of this companion planter, I would say sticking with a um, suc succulent fertilizer, like a 247 or 347, just doing it on a monthly basis during the growing se season is going to be perfectly all right. And I haven't had any pest pressures whatsoever. I'd imagine that the mealy bug would like to get in on these leaves, but I haven't had any of those issues whatsoever with this plant. So maybe the fur actually even protects it from, from sucking insects as well. But um, it's a beautiful one, especially one that is kind of like that, that white velveteen look. I think that's really unique and a great one to have in your succulent collection. Mm -hmm.